No, we're just pointing out that when it comes to dealing with economic coercion, when it comes to dealing with the current trade disputes that we have with China, uh, that the national interest has to be put first. And what we would expect is that the opposition uh, would join with the government in standing up to China when it comes to these trade disputes. Now, Anthony Albanese had a bet each way, uh, said that he would like to see some of these trade disputes resolved. Well, which ones does he want to sacrifice and what industries does he want to sacrifice? Now, he could come out and quite clearly address this matter and say, look, I made a mistake. Uh, I should have said we will stand by all <laughs> Australian industries. Uh, but well, he didn't he, do well, that. He has said... He said that he wants all of the sanctions removed. There has been a, a clarification from Labor here. Do you... Do you seriously think that Labor would want some of those sanctions to stay in place? It Wasn't it just simply a turn of phrase here? Well, it wasn't a turn of phrase because what we've seen all along, especially when it comes to these types of issues, is that he says he supports the government, but then in the next sentence says that he could do things better, he would do things better, and he would have a, a different approach. Now, it's very subtle in how he does it, but he never actually articulates what he would do and how he would do things differently. So he's either got to, if he's going to criticise or make those remarks that he could do things better, point out as to how he would do it. Now, one of the things he did... It actually suggest... sounds... But with respect, Minister, what he said sounds a lot like what you've said to me previously, that you want a constructive relationship with China, you want them to remove the sanctions... As, as part of any goodwill or show of goodwill, and you want to crack on with the relationship. To me, what he said sounds a lot like what you've said to me previously. Yes, but there's a subtle difference in that what he's saying is that he was prepared to sacrifice some of our industry, some of our sectors, to achieve that. What we've made clear all along, all along, is that we want to see the trade disputes that we currently have addressed and all of them addressed and we won't leave one sector behind but the Labor, to achieve Labor what has we're said they want all do. of them removed. Now well, he, the, there was one comment, sure, but he's they've clarified that and said they want them all gone. All right. Well he's he's come out and clarified it, but what you've got to see here is there's a history and a pattern of him saying, oh yes, we support the government's approach, but we would do things differently. Now, here he set out how he would do it differently. Now he's retracted from that. But what we would like to see is, does he fully support the approach that the government is taking? Does he stand beside us and will not criticise the approach that the government is taking? Because every time he speaks with a little bit of a forked tongue, he does subtly try and criticise the government. You can't have it both ways. He wants to have it both ways all the time. And he's got do to you, stop it. He's, do you welcome, he's putting himself forward do you, do as you the, welcome the comment, alternative prime minister. Do you welcome the comment from the Chinese, the new Chinese ambassador, extended an olive branch last week, wanting to uh, basically get the relationship back on track? Stuart Robert, your uh, cabinet colleague, said it's wonderful to see the ambassador coming forward with a very open approach. I think he'll find the Australian government's response equally open to ensure dialogue continues strongly. That was Stuart Robert last week. Do you agree with his assessment? Look, uh, we, we do welcome the words, uh, but what we would welcome even further is then those words backed up by action. And I would love, in the, in the first instance, a, a response to the letter that I sent over 12 months ago expressing the willingness of the Australian government to ministerial dialogue. That would be a very good first step if we were able to sit down and work through the current disputes that we have. My hope is that what the new ambassador will be able to do is begin to build that ministerial dialogue that we've been seeking so that we can sit down in good faith and address the issues that confront us in the trading relationship. The New South Wales Treasurer, a Liberal uh, Treasurer, Matt Keane, says he's very disappointed over the lack of federal support for the New South Wales Job Saver Program. He said he wanted to make the announcement alongside the Prime Minister and the Treasurer, Mr Frydenberg, but they're nowhere to be found. 
This is quite scathing from your Liberal colleague in Sydney, Mr Keane, isn't it? Well, well, one of the things that, you know, the Australian government has done right throughout this pandemic has made sure that we have provided the support that's been necessary to get our economy through this pandemic. Uh, and what we've been able to do is make sure that what was being forecast, particularly when it came to unemployment and scarring when it comes to youth unemployment, that we aren't seeing that. Uh, what we're seeing, in fact, is unemployment forecast to get below 4%, which is truly remarkable. We haven't seen that achieved since the early 70s at a sustained period. So we will continue to keep focusing on playing our role, uh, supporting states and territories like we have through the pandemic, uh, record levels of support, which is but been not on this occasion. In particular to business. This is this no. costs seven hundred million. Apparently, the cost would have been seven hundred million. Uh, you know, a big figure, but nothing compared to what you spent on JobKeeper. Um, isn't it a no-brainer to be stepping in and supporting small business three months out from the election? Well, individual states and territories will make decisions given their own economic circumstances as to what level of support that they need to provide. We, we are continuing to provide support to certain sectors where, where we see uh, it as necessary. But we also want state and territory governments, given the individual circumstances that they face, to be able to provide economic support as well, especially when you look at the levels of support which have been provided by the Commonwealth over the length and breadth of this pandemic, which, which is unparalleled. Finally, the Prime Minister's approval rating has collapsed over summer and the government, well behind in the latest opinion poll, the news poll today, can... Mr Morrison, turn this around, and if so, how does he do it? Well, we, we saw last night uh, an incredible tennis match. Uh, Rafa Nadal, um, halfway through the match in the third set, was uh, love 40 down on serve, and I think everyone uh, who was watching that tennis game thought he was out for the count. But experience, belief and hard work saw that match turn around and saw him holding up that trophy. And I think experience, belief and hard work uh, will mean that we put a very good proposition to the Australian people uh, come the election. And I think this is going to be an incredibly close contest and one where the government, the Morrison government and the Prime Minister will be able to put a compelling case to the Australian people. And that's what we'll be doing over the next couple of months. And we'll be doing it and we'll be able to point to our experience, our belief and our hard work of being able to set a plan for where this nation needs to go into the future. Trade Minister Dan Tien, I very much appreciate your time as always. Thanks. Pleasure, Kieran.